going on, everyone? Welcome back. I think we are on episode 23 now, which is pretty damn good. We're on our Jordan episode. And what better way to have a Jordan episode than have on a guy who is on the path to success in a prime in his very own right, Justin Ramcharan. How you doing, my brother? I'm pretty good. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, first of all, I dude, really we're, so, we're so pumped to have you because, dude, you know, everyone's got their own shit going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. And then... Once in uh, every few months, we just see you posting, you know, you choking the living shit out of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, because no, nah, but seriously though, man. Um, for those that don't know, Justin is a is a pro fighter trying to get into that business. He's been working his ass off, as you can see from his posts, and uh, we can see the journey. We can't, obviously you don't see what you do on a mm -hmm. daily, you know, consistent basis of waking up early, eating the right shit, doing all the workouts, but mm -hmm. we do see the results. Thank you. And, and, you know, I know that no one's going to be there for when you're at your lowest or when mm -hmm. it's the hard times, but people will be there for once you, you win those matches and whatever. But uh, tell the people about how you um, got into fighting and, and your weight class and how all that came about. All right. So I think it's a very interesting um, path. Uh, I started training just because uh, I, I left Newington, right, hometown. Um, went to New Haven because my mom worked in... Uh, she worked in a hospital down in the New Haven area. So I moved here. And the first couple of months were a little hard. Like, I just, I was just going to school. Hold on, try and pull that just a little closer. You, you go. Sorry. Just going to school, you know, and that life was kind of boring, you know, no yeah. social circle at that point. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just start training. And yeah. I, my intention really wasn't to start fighting. And once I started training, it was, I was slowly, you know, three days, four days, you know. Um, my coach really wanted me to fight eventually when. After the uh, six month mark, um, and so six we, months just into casual training, or yeah, so six months I was just training. You know, I was doing pretty good. I was yeah. consistent. You know, um, had had a little bit of athleticism. I wouldn't say crazy. Yeah, but um. So when you first went yeah. into training, was this already? Uh, do you want to tell the people what what exact uh, type of martial arts you do? Um. So my primary base is a uh, BJJ, which is a uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. If yeah. you guys don't know, yeah, it's the art of strangulation. Yeah, right. So. It's typically taking the guy down, getting on top, um, and just controlling, and then v eventually just either breaking their arm or choking them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the type of style that I have been raised to fight in, basically. Right. You know? um, obviously, in an MMA fight, you know, if you look at the highest level, Charles Oliveira, yep. you know, you got to throw hands, you got to you got to wrestle, you got to do a lot of more shit. But I'm oh, sorry about that. No, 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 no. You can swear. <laughs> no, you can swear. No, you can swear. You good. You got to do a lot. You, you good, <laughs> man. I'm filled. I'm filtered up. I'm being serious. You can you gotta, swear. You got to do a lot of shit. But you know, um, the base is BJJ, and I just tried to, um, I try to mask everything to get the guy on his ass and then choke him out. Yeah. Essentially. So, because because of the type of fighting you do. Yeah. Is there ever so, is your mindset going into fights or just? Training when you're constantly training conditioning, is it like my goal is to get this guy on the ground rather than to knock him out, or like are you like is it always based on, like do you have a personal preference? It's fucked up of a question that sounds no, so personal preference. I want to finish the fight as clean as possible. So my yeah. last fight, I finished the guy with a TKO, yeah. and me personally, after looking at the tape. I was like, you know what? I should have submitted him. Yeah. Because I felt I felt that there's something more beautiful about slowly getting into a position and having the guy just give up in front of you. Yeah. You know, because it's funny because I went on his IG post the day after he lost and he said, you know, I didn't I did a nap, I didn't snap. I mean, he got TKO'd and I finished him. You know, I don't know where's the pride in that. But in people's head, if they don't physically tap out or they don't get knocked out, they think that the referee stopped it. Which I guess I know. saw I saw a, uh, like one of those sound clips from Joe Rogan. Yeah, and someone was asking him what's the difference between jujitsu and like another type of fighting, <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, like if like if, if this, we're fighting jujitsu, like you're, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, <laughs> like if, if no if there's no one there to stop it, like you're gonna die. One hundred percent. You know, would you say you're at a point? <laughs> would you say you're at a point where um. Like, how long do you think it takes to where a regular person mm -hmm. like who just wants to like brawl with you in a bar because they're yeah. pissed at you one night? How long has it like? Are you at a point where you're like, yeah, no, no one in this bar can touch me because I'll absolutely fuck him up. If, I genuinely like, is feel it, like But that. isn't it also like illegal? Like, right when you get to a certain point? Yeah. Of, where yeah. you're like basically you get arrested. a license to kill? Yeah. Well, or license not license to, to kill, kill, but you know, no, you know what I mean. It's like yeah. that. I mean, probably at yeah. the highest level. You yeah. Know, like if you're uh, Khabib and you just fuck up. Oh, sorry. 
You can swear, bro. Not no, bad. no, you can swear. We just we went over the rules. Yes, earlier. yes. No, but no, but so you, you can swear. If, if you, Swearing's okay. If, if you're Khabib and you fuck someone up, yeah, you like like that's not smart, you know. Yeah, I'm definitely not at that level yet. Hopefully, God willing, I can get there. Yeah, but um, you know, I think in general, if you train, you should definitely not fuck someone up in a bar. Yeah, you know, that's drunk, intoxicated. Yeah. You're gonna be like um, fucking. Uh, like Bruce Lee or Jet Li in those movies, where like someone tries to fuck them and, and they do that, like they warn One them, they punch. warn them, yeah, they, yeah, they, they warn them, and then the guy throws a punch, and then as soon as he throws a punch, like there's like a million different combinations <laughs> off of one basic punch, I just mean, whoop, I mean, whoop, flip his ass to the ground. One punch man, him, you know, like yeah, they do that shit. Too. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, have you ever had any altercations where you're like, bro, like I'm sorry, I cannot. Um, this with like a random person, just when you're out and about. When I'm out, you know, I def I always have my clique around me, you know. So whenever I'm out, I have like like three yeah. big ass motherfuckers around me. So really, it's never it's never been a problem um, for me. My training partners are all like two thirty, like one ninety. Yeah, you know. So like after a fight or if just go out get drinks, they're just around me. So it's just never been a problem for me. Yeah. Um. Would you? What is your um record, if you don't mind me asking? So right now it is uh four and two, two losses from split decision losses. So oh, never really? Never been finished. Really? Yeah, it's been all close. My last loss was at Mohegan Sun, which was a banger of a fight. If you guys want to watch it, try to watch it. A great fight. One of the best fights of the night. Really? Yeah, it was great. You know, So it was a split loss um, at 145. I went up last minute to take the fight because it was Mohegan, and I just wanted to do it. Um, so. so being someone who's a fighter. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen the Chris Rock getting slapped the shit out of. Oh man, oh, what man. do you? What do you? Oh, man. What can a regular person do to to strengthen their their jaw? Like, what do you do for that jaw training? <laughs> yeah, no, like don't because I know I think I saw something of like Mike Tyson as prime. Like he was doing like some like neck yeah, stuff. Neck bridges and and shit. Yeah, um, yeah. What do you do? Um, I do. So I I have a little small secret. I take like a rope, I bite down on it with a mouth guard on, and I just put weight on it, and I. Really? Just like that. Do you do that every day? Or? Not every day, you know, like because yeah. too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so I mix up my training okay. as much as possible when it comes to conditioning. Yeah. What's I your yeah? What's your up. regular routine like? Break Ooh. it down. <laughs> my regular routine. Yeah. Let's put it on a Monday. I'm gonna say my hardest day would probably be like either Monday or Wednesday when I have to travel upstate and yep. come back. Yeah. So in the morning, I try my best to make it to the uh, Muay Thai. So I do a Muay Thai, so that's kickboxing. Yeah. Either we hold pads or we spar. It's one or the other, depending on the day. Yeah. Right after that, we do um, we do jujitsu. No, we do wrestling. So I wrestle with uh, one of my new guys. His name is uh, Terrence. Uh, he's a uh, he's a he placed fifth in the Junior Olympics. He's really good. I saw Jeez. I saw him beat up uh, this one national coach. It was one of my friends. I'm not gonna say names here. Yeah. But um, he's insanely good, and I've been working with him for uh, let's say. Like two months now, but wow. it's been showing the results for sure. Uh, so I've been training with him, and after that, I travel back, come back, do some more, more, more Thai training. So we train with my guys. I teach some a couple of people, so I, that's how mm -hmm. I get my money. And then jujitsu again. And so jujitsu, not again, but jujitsu. Yep. BJJ. Then we'll end it off either if I have enough energy, which sometimes I don't. I go home and knock out, or I'll do a light twenty minute or twenty minute workout wow. at the edge. Or gym membership. What is the ultimate key to discipline? Well, how how have you found like peace and knowing that you like you need to put your body through hell to be in like tip top shape? Like I'm sure your ass uh -huh. leading up to a fight yes. can't eat. Well, my ass probably eats on a regular <laughs> basis. Like I, I, like on some real <laughs> shit. Like like what do you be? What, what like how 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 does that feel? Like how do you how do you have the discipline and the consistency to keep or and stay locked in? Is it because you want to make it? Is mm. it like that that goal that like you want it that bad? There, I think there's different things. Um, I truly enjoy the lifestyle. Like yeah. it's something that like I would rather do. And it's rare. Like, it's it's very rare. Yeah, not everyone can do what you do. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate. No, that. no, seriously, real shit, man. No, I really enjoy it. You know, um, it's something that I feel that has made my life a lot more focused and clear cut. Yeah. You know, and the lifestyle, I feel like it's just made for me. You know, I can do it day in and day out and look forward for the next day. You know, right. training's the best part of my life. Yeah. You know, and I want that. I want to do that. I'd rather do that than go hang out, you know, go to a I, bar. Hey, I hear like that, that, man. You know, so that's where I am just passionate yeah. about that. So it's more about passionate. And then making it is, 
more different because honestly fighting is very intense you know yeah. there's a chance that you could die which a guy actually died recently in a massachusetts card that i fought on jesus which is crazy you, yeah. were, you were there when that happened um so even crazier story uh so so he we were weight cutting we i'm not his friend i'm not we're not friends yeah but we met each other the day before we fought so he was in the sauna with me and he was weight cutting with me and the fact that he died the day after was just crazy wow yeah and i the day i found out I that's was awful a, i was on an edible so the day i found out that he oh, died oh man i was tripping balls i really was oh, I was like, oh my man God, that's yeah but i would have um, been fucked up, no dude. so fighting in general like when you have to actually have to fight it's intense you know it's yeah. very intense and what my, is it what is it like as soon as that that gate shuts in the octagon so i like, think what is that like are you like oh shit like it's go time honestly i feel like if you prepare the right way yeah that's know, what you, they say you preparation you th- yeah you don't yeah. think yeah you don't think about it like right. everything you're just so locked in you yeah. can't think about anything else you're just so locked in the moments there you know they close the door but you don't really focus on that and you're just looking at the other guy and so, you're like i did this before i trained for this you know what i mean and then you just go for it for your like let's say like for your most like recent fight that you just had yeah whenever that was um like as soon as you know who you're going against mm-hmm. do you, like do you just find all the film you have of this guy know the type of background who he trains with like do you go into all that we, the intricacies and yeah. you just prepare like there's no tomorrow so there's a there's a point where you want to study enough to like respect his skills but at the same time you also want to develop because I'm also so young into my career that yeah. I also want to develop my skills and not be too counterintuitive to a particular style. Right. Right. So every time you get get ready, I like to personally have my coaches look at tape. You know, and I'll look at it a little bit. You know, but my coaches and my guys they should be the ones studying the tape and copying what the guy does. So I fight that type of style. Right. That's how I like to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I personally just like to watch his fights. Like maybe. When I feel like it, like if I feel like if I'm about to spar, I'm gonna watch his tape a little bit, be like, this guy sucks, put it back down and out yeah. of the cage, you know. No, I am surprised you never um at least as far as I know, you never did uh any martial arts or stuff during high school before, did you? I'm um, not in high school. In Trinidad, where I'm from, yeah. Yes, a little bit, you know, I trained yeah. a little bit, but um it was just something I did a long time ago and I it just it was inside me like know? i'm surprised uh you never did like wrestling or anything like do you feel like uh, do you feel like if it was back high school you would have done wrestling maybe to help with um, your ground game possibly so yes and no you know i guess wrestling wrestling's great you know and it's a great base but uh at the same time you know i did i feel like doing other stuff has aided in my progression towards martial arts you know i'll never go back in life like in general I feel oh yeah like hell in no. life no regrets. i feel like in life life sorry no, yeah, like you when you go back and you think you yeah. know if you have regret and you look at something you said you should have done it differently then it's it's not as best it's not the best way you can do it you know yeah right you know you take what you've done and you put it into your life later on because yeah. everything's a lesson you know so yes, I would love to have done wrestling when yeah. I was younger, but at the same time, I'm happy I did track and cross. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's guys, right. You know, so you know, I, I enjoyed that part of my life. Yeah. And when I started training, you know, I just was a sponge and I picked up new things that would help MMA, not wrestling right. instead. So there's a good balance, you know, because I've trained with against wrestlers and sparred them that high level, you know, college guys where they can't take me down in an MMA fight because they they're not used to throwing punches. You know what I mean? Compared to wrestling, it's collar ties, grabs, you pull the guy down, it's a dirty fight, but yeah. at the same time you're not getting slapped and punched in the face constantly. Yeah. You're not getting guys trying to choke you out. Yeah. So it's a different dynamic, you know? And that's how I feel. Do, when it comes to fighting, do you feel like you need to be better conditioned in terms of like uh, just pure body, so like calisthenic workouts compared mm-hmm. to like actual weight lifting itself, or do you mix a little bit of both? Or because because you notice yeah. with fighters, they're able to do all the like you got to be able to do like the hundred push ups, the, yeah. the like the the yeah. core stuff, all 100%. that. Yeah, and then I, and like I don't really see you know a guy like John Jones like squatting four hundred pounds yeah. and working on his legs like that. You know what I mean? Hundred well, percent. John Jones yeah. has like the skittiest legs you'll ever yeah. see in your life. But <laughs> now, um. I think calisthenic work is probably the best way to go, especially yeah. if you're fighting, just because of your joints. Um, weight training is good to a point, um, you know, but, you know, if you're practicing squats, it's not going to help you fight. It's going to yeah. help you squat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right? So, um, particular training, the best way to get good at something is to actually do it. Yeah. You know, like gymnastics will help your mobility, your flexibility. 
weights will help your joints get stronger so right. they add to it but to an extent if you start doing power lifting and on and like 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 heavy ass clean and jerks you know snatches yeah your your body's not going to hold up for fighting you know right. so it should be light should be light calisthenic work should be like after training you know um but it shouldn't be the main thing you shouldn't be focusing calisthenics yeah. and then training training should be number one right you should train first before anything else. doing um Doing jujitsu, this is gonna sound like a really messed up question, <laughs> but do you know like all like the trigger points of the body to where like if I have him here, I could do this, or this is gonna happen. I know this will happen if yeah. I have this guy like this. Like, do you know that like that whole? I would say so. Type of deal. I would say so. Like, do you, do you ever yeah. look at someone and you're like, oh my god, if I get this guy's knee, like it's it's yes, over. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. I know Abel's, <laughs> Abel's shaking right now. <laughs> Why? No, I'm just kicking out because Abel. Boys, Abel not, nah, because Abel Abel tore his ACL a long oh, time. Oh no! Ago. You don't want to hear that. That's fine. We tear Nobody who's told us yet wants to hear that. I could teach you how to tear another person's body. Damn. <laughs> that, you know, that, and, that, and that's crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, that is insane. Like, I, I've never fought. I never fought. I'm not a fighter, man. I'm just chill. And, I mean, I'll talk, I'll talk shit to the point where I, it doesn't, like, I'll get uh, someone pissed off enough, but then, then I'm like, all right, we don't need to fight. We don't need to fight. But, like, jeez, <laughs> I couldn't imagine being you, man. Like, being in, like, Dude, like, just imagine being one on one with somebody, and it's like one of those situations where it's like fucking live or die. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I like, hear you. So, um, just out of curiosity, so when you like you've won, so you say you've won fourteen. Do you get so? And you see these um these these amateur rings that you're in. Do you oh, get? That's four. What's four? Four two. Oh, oh, four and two. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. No, 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 yeah, I don't know. Why I blanked on that. Regardless, one day. <laughs> do you have you gotten paid for any of this stuff? If you're if you're going to these um. Because you said you were at Mohegan. Yeah. So, and I'm assuming, you know, that costs a lot. Yeah. So, so right they, now. Do they take care of you? Do you make money? Like, how does that work? I mean, you get sa sales for ticket em yeah. emission. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. to correct you, amateur right now. So, I'm still amateur ranked. Yep, yep. Right? Number one, by the way. Um, but amateur ranked. Hell yeah. To the ranks. Um, for the amateur divisions, they go off tickles, ticket sales, right? Yep. So, what you, what you sell. Right, so how much money you bring in is how much you take a commission from. Yeah, Wigan, they pay pretty, they pay pretty good. Yeah, when you bring in a lot of tickets. Yeah, um, other ones they don't. So it depends on the venue that you go to. Right, so the amateur division is pretty cool because you can fight wherever. And that's why I'm all over the place. Yeah, there, 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 there. That's there. and that's sick, and dude. I enjoy it. It's more. all part of the journey. Yeah. So um, my goal is to go pro in after one, two, three, three more fights. So I have three more fights left. So what's the definition of going pro to you? UFC itself? Or is there stuff? Um, is there stuff? I mean, nah, you can't get into. No, no, I, I know that. Nah. I know that. But in terms of like, um, right? Is, wasn't it like Bellator? Bellator it's, is an option. Yeah. Yeah, the stuff, stuff like that. Like, what? Yeah. What is your definition of going pro? Going pro, I personally would like to fight under the CFFC, which is like Cage Warriors, Cage Fury. Those are cool because they have yeah. they they fight under the fight pass on the UFC, so they have more of a chance to get into the UFC. Bellator is more of a uh, competition to the UFC, so they don't really look at guys that fight in Bellator because yeah. they compete with each other. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like it's like taking uh, Tom Brady and putting him in like a major league, uh, minor league something. You know, like yeah. to, you know what I mean. So yeah. they're competition, and they don't want to add to it. Right. So it'd probably be a smaller venue that goes through straight to the UFC. Right. So I'm looking at like. Other ones, probably not Bellator. And if I end up in Bellator, that's my coaches. <laughs> he did that, but right. I'm not trying. To so, do that. so other than um fighting, like, have you ever has? Uh, I don't know, cause I don't know. Have you ever gone to college? Like, have you ever thought started, about college? I started. I started community college. Really? Right? I just wanted to get the degree. But to be honest, I'm just focused on fighting. You're just I'm all in. Yeah. And I mean, hell yeah. I mean, hell, yeah, once hell I yeah. go pro, I might look back at it, you know, and do a couple things. Yeah. But right now, I'm just focused on just getting pro so I can get good money. Right, and then you know yeah. if I. But if you if you weren't fighting, watching. what do you think you'd be doing, or what do you think um like type of degree you would or field you would be in? I think um probably graphic design. You really, know, I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, that's what I was going to school for, graphic design. You know, I'm pretty good. A lot of Adobe's. Yeah. You know, put in the work there. No, that that's what's up. Mm -hmm. Um. So I. Obviously, COVID happened yeah. not, not so long ago. We're, I mean, I know Connecticut's lifting the mandate for UConn and uh, Central for um, this upcoming Monday. Yeah. We'd, um, like, we know uh, masks are optional. Mm -hmm. But when COVID first hit, um, did it ever impact your mental health? Did it ever, 
mess you up with like in terms of like fighting? Did it motivate you even more? Like did it? Because everyone has their own little story to tell when it comes when, when COVID hit. Yeah. And when the pandemic hit, I mean, it's it's gonna be a story we're gonna have to tell our gr- children, the, yeah, their yeah. children, like our grandchildren. You know what I mean? Like, is there any like crazy moments that ever happened to you when the pandemic uh, started or um, <laughs> quarantine and all that shit? Yeah. So you know, like when everything was shut down, we were secretly training. With all the doors locked, we had to tint all the doors. We were sneaking through the back. We we were still training. Um, COVID definitely like uh, impacted uh, my training a lot because it set me back a year. You know, I wanted to be. At, if COVID never happened, I'd probably be a pro fighter by now, having my fights in, right? But it also was an opportunity because everywhere was shut down. Yeah. People didn't get to train. Yeah. You know what I mean? People were weren't in it, and it gave me a great chance to literally zone in on training to the point where, um, that I was training with one of my good friends. His name is Daniel Musu, and he's actually competing in the ADCC trials today. And the, he's the, the ADCC trials is like a high level. A lot of black belts, a lot of good guys. He's filthy. He's filthy. I got to train with him all the time. You know, he definitely elevated me to a level that when everyone did start coming back, like all the high, high, high experienced guys, you know, they had they had a lot of problems with this guy that was just training for three, maybe f- not even four yet at that point. You know, they had a lot of problems with me just because I was training with like one of the top guys. Yeah. You know, and it just benefited me because I stuck with it and I kept sneaking out you know training was my sneaky link have you ever (laughs) have you ever met any um any pro fighters or has anybody ever hit you up saying hey i noticed you man keep like keep up i've met valentina shevchenko really yeah that was dope i don't i have heard the name i don't think i necessarily was the ufc women's flyweight 125 really yeah that's sick it was dope you know she she, she, we got to do a a light sparring round with her oh shit dude that's crazy she was fast as fast as fucking person yeah her punch was so fast, you know. She was super cool too. Really? Yeah, she was super cool. Oh my god, that's I, crazy! I, I had the biggest fanboy moment. Like Dude, I, I was yeah. smiling for two weeks. I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Um, so when it when it comes to uh, all that, there term, you go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that, that's damn. That's, yeah. Dude, that's sick. A little cutie too. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any um? I know you said Oliveira, but are, like, are there any um? Any pro fighters right now, whether it's big names, maybe they're not a big name, but like you, you study their game or take away from from their their game. Like, is there anybody in particular? That... I really like Shamaya Hamza. You guys know what I'm talking about? I don't think I do. Hamza Shamaya. Pull, pull that, pull that guy up. He's like Khabib 2.0, to be honest. How do you, how do you spell his name? Um, <laughs> K A M. Is this is this him right here? Yeah. So this guy is like he's like Khabib, but like on steroids. Really? But he's not on steroids. What division is he in? He is a uh, 185er. Really? Yeah, he really fucks people up. He really fucks people really? up. Really? You take away from his game, you think? It's, it's the, sh- the stuff he does, mm. money. Other you know, than um, when it comes to submissions and stuff, are, are you? do you feel like you're a better puncher or kicker? Or, mm. or like what exactly? Do you think you're an all-around type of fighter? Because yeah. everyone, like, you know, like, okay, this guy is 100%, mm-hmm. like, stay away from his left or, and shit yeah. like that. Like, you hear those terms. Uh-huh. But, like, if someone were to, like, or, um, let's say, like, this was the UFC and, mm-hmm. we'll, like, us casual fans are watching the TV yeah. and we see, uh, you know, the tail of the tape and we see the two people, the age, the weight, and the breakdown, mm-hmm. what do you think someone would say to describe your game if they... If they're to analyze you and break you down, I would say I'm definitely more of a uh, grappler style fighter. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, I just don't like to get hit that much. Yeah. <laughs> I just, honestly. Usually, yeah, because you, you like you said, you like to end it quick. So yeah. like, pretty much like as soon as, let's say someone like throws like a slow punch, like you'll just grab their arm. No, boom. No, no. Well, you got to set it up. Oh you know? yeah, so again, yeah, for sure. I am I am down to throw punches and kick people. In the face. <laughs> you know, I'm down to do it. You know? Yeah. I'm definitely down. I'm definitely down to swing. I'm definitely down to feel it. And I've sparred with a lot of good boxers, done a lot of boxing sparring, Muay Thai sparring, you know. Um, so I'm definitely down with it, you know. Right. But that's not my first option when it, to fight. You know, if I can take the guy down, I'm putting him on, on his ass yeah. every single time. Right. And I'm punching him from there. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to – if I can't – if I can take him down and I'm standing punching him in the face, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You can <laughs> put him down. You know, you know, it's funny. You're like the living definition of what I hate the most in UFC, <laughs> the video game. Like, I'm that person where it's like, bro, stop being a pussy. Let me up. Like, you're the person who's like, nah, fam. Like, you staying down. I'll take and you'll it. just tire the shit out of me like a tall. Yeah. Like, bro, I hate that. And I try. Like, I try and, like, in, in the game itself, like, mm-hmm. learn on fucking 
like how to transition out and like just nope I keep canceling <laughs> the transitions and I just get gassed and beat the shit out of on the ground the and UFC's humiliated yeah. that's the thing with the ground game is like yeah. if you know how to truly dominate somebody yeah. like and just not let them escape bro mm-hmm. it is it's it's like I feel you feel bad to watch it yeah and then it's just fucked up like if you're the person obviously getting beat the shit out yeah. of yeah nah they call it a wet blanket you want to be a wet blanket on top of damn it. Don't, come off. don't come off him. that's OD yeah that's uh, what you want that's messed up dude <laughs> Is, is um so of your of your um so right so six fights right yeah so of your six fights which one is uh has been your favorite because you said the one that was split you said it was a crazy ass fight yeah right? it was really good was that was that your favorite one or do you have a favorite um, one maybe one that was two. probably my favorite one yeah, it was you think really so? back and forth were you guys yeah. clanging and banging and talking shit or like um, how was it so it was funny because uh I the guy his guy pulled out and I was getting ready for a Mohegan fight they I had four guys pull out they got hurt. You know, one guy got pulled out because he got bit by a spider like three weeks before, what which made hell? no sense. Nah, I don't know. I don't know what's up with people, but you know, I guess, I guess, I guess that was what happened. Yeah. So I was getting ready for an opponent I didn't have. Yeah. And then a weight class above me, um, this guy's guy pulled out. So, you know, it was only logical, right, to just match us up together. Yeah. Even though it was one weight class up. Um, so this kid was like his short, but jacked, jacked motherfucker. Yeah. Fucking Jack, bro. His forearms were double the size of mine. Jesus. You know, sure, like dread up. So when we, when I saw him at the casino, like I saw him, I like to, I like to like stare at the guy. I just, I fuck with it. Um, but he looked small because he had a, he had a fucking XXL hoodie on. So and he couldn't see shit. So I was like, oh, yeah, this kid's small as fuck. I'm about to fuck this kid up. That's yeah. how I felt. Hey, in that, the to be honest, Damn. yes. And I respect that. So I started stealing that. By the way, I stole that shit from him. Hell yeah. But uh, yeah. So when we got in the cage, yo, his forearms enormous, big dude. Um. We started fighting, and it was it, it's a fight between two very like de- dedicated people. You can tell it, you know, like the movement was there. Yeah. Two athletics, fast, you know, yeah. it was going back and forth. So did you have to because you said this was like more of a last second thing? Yeah. Did you have to bulk up for this? Cut down? Low key, yeah, I did. Low key, you had I, to bulk up for it. Yeah. Is it easier to bulk up or to cut down for you? I like to cut down because you have to cut down. Yeah, because then I just start becoming like chisel muscle. You know really? I and mean? if I just stay the same, I have some belly fat. You know, so like what? <laughs> so what weight were you before the fight, and then what weight were you like later? Like once you had a weigh in. So usually I, I, usually like one forty. 140, you know, and then we go to, no, this one was at 145. Yeah. So I didn't cut anything. I just walked right in. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah so you just fit right in with that. Yeah, but so, I, like, I like cutting to 35. Yeah, so so what happened with this uh this fight? This one? Yeah, yeah. So what, what in particular happened? Like that um that led to split decision, do you think? Um, Because, I mean, obviously, like we haven't seen the So the, the fight, first so. round, the first round was pretty close because it was back and forth. I took him down. He took me down. Yeah. I got a couple of kicks in. He got a couple of kicks in my leg. I didn't feel it uh, until the day after. Yeah. But uh, so the second round, I won the second round. So the first round, it was close. Second round, I definitely won this, the second round because I was on top of him. I was punching him up the, the entire time. Third round, I'll give him the third round because I, I was pushing the wrestling right but he countered me and he almost got me in an arm bar and once he got me in the arm bar position there you know I f- there's an escape where because he was strong as fuck he was really strong so i was trying to boom my, pull my elbow down i couldn't get it so there's a second escape which is a risky one which is you extend your arm out you let him get the break so you can turn your arm in like that Ooh. right so as yeah. soon as you get as soon as i'm but here, like if you mistime it like it's yeah, over yeah your arms might be broken wow so as soon as i'm here i'm like <laughs> i i can't get out because i know we have like what a minute 30 left yeah i'm like ah fuck it fine yeah, so i let it out i hear it pop in my arm i'm like oh no pain all right Ooh. keep it Keep going. No, no. That's like when uh, this dude Aaron ripped off the, oh, yeah, the chain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Do you want? You don't watch Attack on Titan, do you? Um, a little bit. A little bit. Nah, there was this. There was this part in the show. We won't. We won't spoil it. But Abel, Abel knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> that. Oh, that is crazy. No pain. I know a little bit. <laughs> I know a little bit about Attack Attack on Titan. Yeah. La- I know Aaron's, Aaron's bad. Last, yeah. He's he, bad now. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Explain that to me. You got it. I don't think we can. Okay. I mean, I'm down. We? I'm down. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay. For anyone that's in the anime and in the Attack on Titan, yeah. Just pause it. Fast forward me like ten minutes. No, I'm kidding. Like, <laughs> like just keep fast forwarding until like we're not talking about this shit anymore. <laughs> so I guess um. Aaron, like, how much do you know about Attack on Titan? I watched the first season. Oh, okay, the first season? Yeah. Well, Aaron, just to, without spoiling shit, Aaron, just let's just, just say Aaron got to a point where yeah. he was just sick and tired of, like, 
the world trying to come for his people. Mm-hmm. Because it turns out, like, I don't know if you knew this, but the Titans that were planted on the island in the first place were from, and it was, it's really from an outside attack, from, like, the outside world. And he just pretty much got sick and tired of everyone's shit and found this ultimate loophole to where he can gain, like, the ultimate power. Which we won't discuss or break down. I think that's the best possible way of putting all right, it. All right. And pretty much, like, right now, the, the whole damn world, unless you, like, read the manga. I mean, I had, I, I know Abel has. I haven't, so I'm mm-hmm. taking episode by episode. And pretty much, like, the apocalypse. This dude started the apocalypse. Oh, and we're about <laughs> to see if it, like, hap- goes through what happens tomorrow, I guess. Because oh, right, we're recording on a tomorrow? Saturday. Yeah, final episode's tomorrow. So. Final episode? That's 13th, I think. Next week. No, nah, I thought it was tomorrow. They said, said, okay, so then this might be the semi-final episode. Oh, yeah. So, so what I was telling you, I was like, there's no way this is the final. Regardless, mm. we're right about close to the end, so. um, Yeah, no, but there was a part in the show where Aaron is, like, ch- like cuffed. Like, oh, his sh- arms are cuffed. And, like, they literally said, it's impossible to break these cuffs. Like, it is impossible. And he pretty much said, like, respectfully, like, I don't give a fuck. And he literally ran, like, to the point where, like, his arm, his hand literally ripped off. And, like, he kept going. And it was insane. Like, it was insane. <laughs> everyone, was, everyone watching the show was like, damn, he's fucked. And he was like, <laughs> and he was like nope. And it was like, what? So, the <laughs> fact that you said that, that's insane. And I'm not going to lie, man. That was, like, very poetic, the way you just totally broke that down. Yeah. Like, first round, you know, you know, we got this in, we got this in. Second round's on top. Third round, you know, we got me. Like, dude, that was, like, sick, the way you broke that down. It's like, chess. <laughs> that, so, what's it like for a fighter? Like when you're going to sit sit down when you got the guys giving you the ice, they're telling you what yeah. to look for, and they're telling you yeah. like what's what the hell's going through your head at the time? Because they're telling you all this shit, and you're just like, like you know, you're freaking breathing heavy. Yeah, you you still got to deal with a fight. You got people telling you what to do. Yeah, like what's the mindset of a fighter in that that moment that you think like is there? Are you truly truly one hundred percent locked into what they're saying? Are you mm-hmm. like a little bit focusing on your breathing? Are you focusing on like I just want to kill this guy? Like what the hell? What the hell's going on in in a, in a fighter's head? So for my experience, um, when when I've fought, you know, it's either been a full decision, you know, or first rounds. So so far, you know, when I go in there, I go in the once I sit to the second round, I'm like, oh shit, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's the first thing. Yeah. Um, depending on what happened the last round, you know, um. I think that would have depended. But usually if it's a long fight, I'm not really getting damaged that much. So usually when I sit down in the corner, you know, I'm perfectly fine. You know, I'm a little tired, you know. <sighs> yeah. You know, but uh, there's never a time where uh, I feel that, you know, I'm not focused on my coach. At, at what point are you um breathing really heavy? Because I know you always hear a guy like Cormier always say, yeah, yeah, always yeah. starting to breathe out of his mouth yeah. or like or Rogan or whoever. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you're conditioning... Uh, are you always like? Did you always have the mouth guard in when you're in like the the yeah. gloves on the whole the whole thing and like you maybe like shadow, uh, what is it shadow box for like yeah, maybe like yeah, good like ten box. minutes or like do and then like you simulate rounds and stuff like. It's good to wear your mouth guard um, when you train. I don't usually do it. I yeah. do it sometimes. You yeah. Know, but uh, yeah, mouth guards are annoying, man. You know? Yeah. Like, who fucking wants? To I mean, shit. Actually? I mean, dude. <laughs> I mean, when you're fighting, you yeah. gotta wear it. Yeah, you know? yeah, but yeah. when I'm training, if I'm hitting the bag, I'm not wearing a mouth guard. Right. And if I'm running, I'm not wearing a. Do you, you know what I mean? Um, what what do you think is, is it that makes fighting so so tiring for people? Is it the fact that you're constantly exerting oh. uh, like muscle and like like so fast and so repetitively to the point where it's just like yeah. you're just releasing so much? Like how do you control that? I'm gonna sound too smart, but this is from a guy that I used to listen yeah. to on his own podcast. Yeah. So fighting is a very fast twitch, explosive muscle thing, right? Right, it's very dynamic. It's fast, so it's a lot of fast motions in fighting, right? So when you fight, you have to be able to exert mass energy consistently throughout the time. Right. You know, it's not like uh, it's probably very similar to wrestling to a point, but it's not like you're not going to hit in the face. You're not if you get cut. You know, you're losing parts of your body while you fight. So yeah. it, it's explosive muscle usage kind of like when you're wrestling but as well as you're getting punched in the face and getting hit takes your energy away right that? yeah so if you get hit a lot you get fucking tired you get tired when you when you get hit a lot boom 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 the shots keep coming you start getting tired it just just adds up it just right. adds up so much you know so if you're getting fucked up on the feet you start getting boxed hit in the stomach someone What's probably up? called just set it back up oh, you did all right we good you if, you're getting, if you're getting boxed up beat up you know yeah you're gonna get tired right you know? but 
You know, it's just a fast exertion of muscle. Just yeah. Muscle just being faster. Just bam, 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 bam. Every single second. There's never a resting period of time. Yeah. You know, some fighters will take it slow. You know, like some fights are slow. Guys go there, technical. But for the most part, it's fast, explosive motions. And that's what leads to guys getting tired. And then if you lose blood, and you know, if you get cut, if you get yeah. punched a lot, then that, those factors add. Because you never know what's going to happen. Have you ever been cut up pretty bad? Um, Honestly, I've been lucky so far. Yeah. I mean, I've never split a part of my skin not yet. yeah i've had a couple broken noses yeah um, what do you, what happens when when you do break your nose do they like pop it back in do, uh, what do you what do you do just let it heal just, naturally just, just a small really pop. how yeah. long does it take to heal i mean no nah, i feel like i'm young like so i'm around like old like guys that are like 26 27 yeah they take long to heal up i'm like yo if i get a bruise give me two days yeah <laughs> two days i'm, I'm good you yeah. know the, the the most noticeable pain probably would be like a jaw shot from a fight where I fought this one guy and threw a good uppercut and my jaw clicked. Oof. And I was there for like a good week. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but, nah. uh, I, I wanna say that when um that that how how does it feel when um you get a lot of people and the fact that like you know it's not like um, you're Anderson Silva yet, or yeah. like you know, you're just an ultimate, yeah. ultimate dude. But like, how does it feel when you notice your progression, mm-hmm. and then the people are like, do you feel any sort of validation when people are hitting you up and like saying, "Holy shit, dude!" Or, yeah. Or do you like is that is that what keeps you going? Is no, there that doesn't keep me no, going. no? You, like, do, do you think yeah. that's just like, yeah, hey, it's nice and all, but you it's know, nice, yeah, just, you know, like, I don't give a shit. I feel like everyone has their own thing in yeah. life, you know. I'm but the way I'm doing it is the way you're supposed to do it. Right. You know, you have to stay active. You got to keep posting. You got to keep doing it. In my world, in my world, that'd be a ghost. Like yeah. if I wasn't trying to like make this a living i'd be a ghost no one would know where the fuck i buy right you no know, they wouldn't know shit right. you know but you know you have to do that in this game of just like social media presence or at least trying to be something like that while yeah. you progress you know it's i like to call it a little personal blog journey you know people react to it but again it's the book that i'm showing people yeah i hear that let them like it i hear that let yeah, yeah like it let them fuck with it let them not i don't care i hear that <laughs> i um i i think for me personally I, not necessarily get my validation, but I really enjoy it when yes. I get someone who I want to have on, and they're like, yeah. "Hell yeah, let's do it!" Mm-hmm. Like that is that feels good. Yeah, that like feels, today. Yeah, that that today, like, feel, that, like you you ag- right. yeah like yeah. you agreeing to want to be on, for example, mm-hmm. is way better than like let's say a hundred people like saying, "Oh, good job, keep it up." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like I because like p- the people wanting to be on is like, "Fuck yeah, yeah dude!" Like yeah. like. Let's fucking go. I mean, you got a dope setup. Man. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it's definitely, that. It's definitely fire. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Um, but but yeah, man, I I was I always use this this example, and it sucks, but it's kind of, it's just the way things sort of work. Someone tells you they're gonna do something. Mm-hmm. So for you, I'm sure you told somebody there was there had to be one. There's always a beginning, and yeah. there must have been one person, the very first person, whether it's your parents, yeah, or whoever, where you said. I'm gonna be a fighter. Mm. Not when you were training, like right when you officially said, I'm gonna take this seriously. Yeah. Then I'm not saying this happened with this person, but you try and be that one person that says, I'm gonna do this. Mm-hmm. And then they'll say, okay, yeah. but they might not necessarily believe you. I mean, word spreads, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm but, not gonna go yeah. into names. And yeah, but names they might drop. not necessarily believe you. Yes. Yeah, so, and yeah, then all, but, and then what happens is, then all of a sudden you make progress. Yeah. And then, for example, mm-hmm. you training and training and training, and all of a sudden you post a six pack, and I was like, what the yeah. fuck? What's going on here? <laughs> and then like good shit good shit good shit and then you win your first fight yeah. and I was like how the fuck did you do that like what mm-hmm. the fuck you're a fucking fighter now what the fuck and you're like bro yeah. I tried to tell you these last fucking two three years yeah. where, where you weren't paying attention mm-hmm. like what the hell dude so it, it, it's it's unfortunate yeah. the, like the, the fact that that's just kind of how life works Yeah. but honestly man like I think that when you truly focus on yourself and truly yeah. just block out the noise exactly everything just takes its course 100% like god forbid one day I'm the next Jimmy Fallon and I have my own fucking talk show <laughs> like god, god forbid. forbid yeah god, god forbid <laughs> I mean lord willing like uh, and, and the people are like how, how the fuck did that happen I'm like yeah. motherfucker I've been posting doing shit yeah. and working on stuff little by little over time, you know, it's 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 a process. Yes. What so, I noticed, like social media, especially, yeah, like people don't need to like that shit. You know, as long as you do it. And and I think I I don't know if I ever told you that, but I I think I told somebody. I was like, I it might have been you, maybe a long time ago though, mm-hmm. when you first started. But just because people aren't 
liking or commenting yeah. or hitting you up mm-hmm. doesn't mean they're not watching. Exactly. It does not mean they're not exactly. watching. It, like like I you I know that 100%, because yeah. I, I'm I'm that person at times for some people. Not yeah. nobody specifically, but mm-hmm. like you like sometimes you'll check in on somebody like, oh shit, like they're still doing good. All right. Yeah, yeah. And even though you might not necessarily be like a diehard fan or supporter, yeah. But you're still checking in. Like everyone are they, watches. Are they still man. take yeah. Everybody yeah, watches. everybody watches, man. Everybody checks in. Like are they are they still taking this shit serious? I like don't matter, you know. Yeah. You can have one like on your post. Oh yeah. You know, people But, but it, it could be like a thousand views. Yeah. 100%. But one like Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. You know it's crazy, hey. By the way, <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to leave a like, speaking of likes. It'd be much appreciated. Please be sure to subscribe and comment. Hit that notification bell for more notifications. <laughs> no, 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 I actually That's do appreciate the support, man. We, we're close to 100 subscribers, which nice, is actually, nice, I mean, nice. for a damn podcast, it's yeah. hard to get. It's not like I'm fucking David Dobrik and I got like a <laughs> sexy-ass thumbnail and I have I, I have uh, Miranda Cosgrove here on the set. For, we're going to go. Able, gonna, yeah. no, 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 I do have Abel. <laughs> Nah, me, me, Abel, and um, some other friends in the future. We're probably gonna do some some extra like really funny stuff. Yeah, yeah. At, at some point, but for now, this is like the core, the fundamental piece yeah. of the puzzle, mm-hmm. which is which is this, and uh, it's easy, it's simple. Yeah. And I highly suggest, man. Like, see, for you, it's it's fighting. For me, it's this. Yeah. For for anybody that's listening, man, like you you got something that's interest of you that you think you could possibly could possibly lead to something. Like Justin's on his way to the fucking UFC. <laughs> and speaking of the fucking UFC. Dana, listen up, bro. Listen up, because I know you're cool and you'd be hanging out with uh, the Nelk boys. Listen up, Dana. This man right here, I need you to send your finest scout to watch this man and every move that he does because I promise you, I'm going to put this in existence. I'm going to see you one day on a card on my TV that I paid for, Dana. All of Connecticut has your back, Dana. All of Connecticut is going to pay for you and your... Freaking, uh, your, your your damn well, well, corporation or your damn uh, business. All of Connecticut is gonna be paying you more money just for this man to be. Just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You got a gem right here. Mm-hmm, seriously, you. not but seriously, man. Like, let's go. Thank you. Thank let's you. go, dude. I'm ready, man. Next fight, you better. <laughs> May twentieth. May twentieth. May twenty. You better. Mm, I'm not gonna say nothing. Mmm. <laughs> mm, Dana. Mm. <laughs> no, let, let's let's go, man. May I'm I'm, hi- I'm garden, hyped man. up. <laughs> I'm hyped up, man. Freaking uh. Dude, God forbid, uh, you do make the UFC, mm. and you're I think like you're mixing up God forbid and uh, God willing or God willing, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, God, 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 do something. Yes, <laughs> nah, there nah, you go. Nah, but but still, um, when um, let's say let's mm. say when because well, we're gonna say when when yes. you're in the UFC, yes. And let's say you, it's it's in like New York City or something, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we gotta pack that shit up, man. We gotta pack Ooh, it up, and it's gonna be crazy. Good, man. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy, man. Do, uh, have you um, for your fights? Because I don't know if I've ever seen you do this, or I don't. Because I don't. No, no. This is no disrespect to you. Like I don't be checking on everybody every of two course, seconds. Of course. Um. Do you ever like represent uh? Because you're Trinidad, right? Uh, do you like have a Trinidad flag? I worn, so I have a tracksuit yeah. with my colors on it. Really? Um, yeah. It's been getting weirder now because I actually have sponsors now. Yeah. Marlo, it's a bear. It's fire. You know. Yeah. Hit me up. You know, I got my guys. They got make a fire bear. Yeah. Um, but um, it's a bear company, so I've been wearing their stuff now. Really? Uh, but usually I wear a tracksuit, like a red, black, and white tracksuit, which yeah. are the national colors for my country. Right. Um, I don't like the flag to walk like that. It's just a lot, and then I gotta give that guy that, and then I gotta do that. Yep. I would probably do a bandana though, you know, probably for the next one. Right. A bandana, but you know, I usually like to represent the colors some way, yeah. Or shape, you know. Um, just uh, definitely represent the country. Do you do you have a uh, a signature uh, like move like you know McGregor like he, he'll do the arm thing <laughs> sometimes or. Um, I can't think of it as or like post <laughs> post fight or post win or like celebrate. Or, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say celebration, yeah. a thing you do. Like, do you have something, like, set? Did you practice it? Um, Is it natural? Like, you know that guy yeah. uh, that does the shoey thing, the heavyweight dude? Uh, Tai Tuafasa. Tuafa- so Tuafasa, yeah. Fire. Yeah, fire. yeah, the shoey, that shit's <laughs> hilarious. Do you, do you, like, have you ever thought about um, um, having a sort yeah. of thing? Cause I'm exactly, still working on it. Because <laughs> exactly what you said with, like, the um, the social media thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, yeah, yeah, let's say... um. Uh, you do one thing like it was just spontaneous yeah, or it was yeah. practice, and then it was like, holy shit, this guy is sick. Like he mm. he does this every time. I want this guy to win, and then yeah. it, and then it starts, and then it builds, and then like dude, Patty the Batty. Yeah, yeah. This guy just came out of nowhere because I he has the freaking haircut of like one of the Beatles. 
from like the damn 60s and 60s, 60s, 70s. And, and, and he talks smack and he backs it up and everybody love loves it. Yeah, Everyone loves good. a good instigator that True. looks crazy or like has mm-hmm. a look to him. That everyone's like, holy yeah, shit. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I look generic? I don't know. I don't think so. I think you look fine. Maybe I got a diamond hair red. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that would be pretty tough. Right. If you if you like dyed your your hair like tr- like Trinidad colors or or like like little stripes or something like some <laughs> Dennis Rodman shit. Hey, maybe, I, maybe maybe. Hey, I always say, man, like if I was um a famous, I would only do this if I was a f- like a professional athlete. Yeah, I would do like the Odell look or like the yeah, DK yeah. Metcalf or like mm-hmm. uh. Me- Rhyme a little bit where like every other like month I'll like have like different colors or like then a Schroeder where he has like the patch in the hair like I would always yeah. mix it I would always mix it up with colors that shit is fun I gotta think I gotta think I don't know what I'll do Bert, haven't you been blonde before uh, when I was like a little ass boy little <laughs> no, no, not, no not since hitting not, a, hey, not since growing hair in my chest no <laughs> <laughs> nah you could definitely pull off some highlights or something yeah maybe a Mi- highlight mix up the hair uh-huh. mix up the looks I mean you always see it the fighters sometimes they'll, they'll go in they're fucking bald out of nowhere yeah. and then they got an afro next week it's crazy yeah. Maybe a tattoo somewhere. You know? Yeah, for me, I have the John Jones tattoo. Oh word! Philippians four yeah, thirteen. Yeah, I, ha- I have the like exact placement oh, and everything. Word. That's fire. It's funny because like I I don't hate anybody, but that motherfucker man. You know, I was I'm a, I'm a, I was always a Cormier guy mm-hmm. and always will be. And whenever they fought, I wanted Cormier to win so bad, and he just couldn't pull it up. But like it's John Jones, like nobody could pull it off. John like, Jones. The guy's man. a freaking alien. John Jones is an anomaly. Yeah. Him, no, man. and and it's crazy because he is a. I don't know what his other brother does but like his his other brother everybody knows Chandler Jones yeah, yeah, is yeah. one of the best pass rushers in all of football that family so I'm, yeah I'm sure yeah that family's just a bunch of freaks like yeah. athletic monsters and I'm sure that John Jones teaches them oh yeah like just grab him by the wrist and this is your wrist control and pff, like <laughs> those guys definitely help each other out 100%, insane 100%. but yeah I, I as much as I always want that guy to lose whenever he does fight um I saw well I always was curious about the Philippians thing and then mm. when I saw his placement of the tag I was like dude Fucking a that asshole, and I was like, damn, I gotta, I gotta get a, I gotta get the John Jones tattoo. I guess, hey, John did it, you know. Yep. I mean, he did it. He inspired a generation. Yep. Uh, so I know you said that you had your um, your, uh, fanboy moment when it came to sparring that that girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, what will it feel like to you when, let's say, ten, fifteen, however many wins it takes to get to the UFC? Yeah. When you have to go against somebody that you actually looked up to, or like you, everybody knows, mm-hmm. and the whole yeah. you have a whole crowd looking down at you, trying to face this other guy. When you're trying to go from, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're trying to uh, become the hunted because you're the hunter. Mm-hmm. This yeah. whole process you're doing, you're the hunter yeah. because you're hungry and you're trying to reach that goal. True. Then, you, you know, you, you want to become the lion that everybody mm-hmm. wants to attack the throne. How how do you think it'll feel for you personally when you're in that situation? And you're going against uh, whoever's, because what are you, middleweight, lightweight? Bantamweight. So Bantamweight, 35. so that's right below light? That's one be- below feather there, so 45. That's yeah. Alexander Volkanovski, you know that guy? Don't think so. Um, Max Holloway, you know Max Holloway? I know Max, Max so everyone knows Max. Max. more lower. Yeah. So TJ Dillashaw. Okay, yeah, okay. That's his weight class. So, you, shit. Well, so, so Peter what? Jan's the champion. So, Aljamain is a champ. Yeah. How'd you make so, so how will it feel like? Let's say you have to be going against one of those guys. You think you'd be ready? I mean, I mean well, yeah, keep in mind, definitely you'll be right. older. Yeah, there'll yeah. be much more experience on mm-hmm. your end. But, but how do you think that'll feel to you? Like, does that sound real? Like, yeah, mother, like, sure. it wouldn't sound real to me if all of a sudden, five years from now, I have like a million followers and uh, Ariana Grande herself is coming over my fucking house. Like, that doesn't <laughs> sound fucking real. That sounds like a joke. That sounds like a joke. But like anything can happen Anything's depending on how life, hard yes. you take shit seriously. For sure, yeah. Um, yo, I mean, if you if you look at the champ, right? You know, there's definitely a part like especially now if it's like if it's a someone that you still look and study at, right? You know, and you gotta fight him. You know, I would be like, damn. We've gotten to this point. This is crazy. Yeah. You know, but once that clears up, you know, I think I'd probably, it would take me like a, a day. Give me a day to be like, like, you got, you got six or eight weeks to get ready. I'd probably have the day before all that training starts. I'd be like, damn, this is crazy. I'm yeah. about to fight this guy. Yeah. This is insane. And then as soon as day one starts for training, Locked in. Locked in. Yeah. You know. Like, like this goes from a, I'm, yeah. I'm a fan to I gotta kick, I gotta kick yeah, this gotta, guy's ass. Yeah, gotta fight this motherfucker. You yeah. Know? He's not gonna, he's not gonna, he's not gonna grab me and teach me these moves. Is he's there, gonna try to kill. Do you think? Try to kill me, you do know? you think that there's a lot of people who once they they do make it big, where that can get in their head a little bit? I mean, I know we saw um 
Adesanya when he first, uh, yeah. I believe his first fight when he came to UFC, like one of his first few fights was against Silva, like old Silva. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that he was able to like beat him, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like, I looked up to this guy my whole life. And I know Silva clearly wasn't in his prime. Yeah, yeah. And that would have been a different story 100%. if they did fight. But um, do you think that new fighters and fresh blood like coming in, like that could actually like contribute to a loss because they're so like, just oh my god like they're so yeah. they're so worried about like the oh my god i'm here mm -hmm. and they just can't like lock in so there's a fighter um his name is uh george st pair he's oh um, yeah so george st pair had to fight matt hughes who was the big dog back in the day gsp yep. he looked up to matt his entire fighting career and i'm pretty sure he lost the first fight and there's a on his podcast he was with joe rogan i think mm -hmm. he was t talking about how he felt in the first fight that he did lose you know and he said he was so starstruck by the moment that he couldn't believe he was fighting that guy. Yeah. And GSP is one of the best fighters in the world, historically, yeah. at this point. Yeah. I love you using know. him in the fucking game, dude. He's yeah. awesome. He's unreal. You know, that bald head don't lie. But, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but nah, GSP was a very um, starstruck. So, yeah, you know, like, it, it's definitely a possibility. And I don't know how I will react when that situation happens, you know. But I think uh, mentally I'm pretty strong so far, right? to the point where I, I believe that that's how I'd react. You know, I would be sitting in my bed like, holy shit, and the next day I'd lock in. That's how I believe I would be. Justin, I know you'll be ready for it. Mm -hmm. I know that your journey has only just begun. Yes, and uh, I can't wait to say, you see that guy on my TV? <laughs> that guy was at my fucking house. <laughs> I can't wait for that day to happen. We're going to speak that shit into existence because no, it's going to happen. We're, no, we're, no, we're. no doubt on our minds. Justin, it has been an absolute privilege to have you on. Thank you. Thank it has you. been absolutely amazing. This has been uh, an amazing conversation, man. Uh, I would love to have you on in the for future. Sure, sure. You know, 20 plus wins from now, however, however long, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, it was great having you on. Abel, I appreciate you as always. Everyone, uh, we, got, we got a lot of stuff uh, planned for the future, so... Uh, with that said, man, I appreciate everyone's support. Please make sure you spread the word. Please make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Follow me on all pl platforms wherever you get your podcast. My heart is with you all. And with that said, ciao for now.